a fist fight between two women behind the Academy Sports Plus outdoor store in Jacksonville, Florida devolved into utter chaos on the evening of September the 26th of 2019. Among the witnesses cheering the combatants on was 18-year-old Ava Ray Morin, an exotic dancer at a local gentleman's club called Wackos. At some point, Morin pulled one of the women off of the other. She subsequently produced a handgun from her waistband and fired two shots into the air. The young woman threatened to shoot everyone before discharging a third bullet into the ground. Bystanders fled as Maureen continued unloading gunshots, reportedly piercing the windshield and headrest of a nearby vehicle in the process. Eventually, deputies from the Clay County Sheriff's Office arrived and were able to identify Maureen as the individual responsible for the gunfire. Then the following day, law enforcement raided Wackos in connection with unrelated criminal activity by several employees. Officers recognized Maureen's car parked outside and arrested her for the previous night's shooting. She was charged with three counts of attempted murder and was held at the Clay County Jail on a $750,000 bond. Number 8. Jaden O'Neill Critchlow 19-year-old Kamali Gabidon Link from North London was brutally hacked to death in Wood Green by five gang members on February the 22nd of 2019. The father of one noticed his attackers approaching him outside of a movie theater. He reportedly sought shelter in a nearby hair salon. However, the gangsters chased after him like a pack of animals, using a samurai sword and machetes to butcher him. The victim's friend, 20-year-old Jason Fraser, suffered multiple stab wounds and a gunshot wound in the onslaught, but fortunately escaped with his life. The gang members were arrested and in January of 2020, they were each sentenced to life behind bars. One of the defendants was identified as drill rapper Jaden O'Neill Critchlow, who was 17 at the time of the violent gangland killing. Prior to his arrest, O'Neill Critchlow's music career as part of the drill crew known as the OFB Collective had been gaining steam. While the young man was on remand awaiting trial, he was offered a record deal worth nearly $200,000. He'd even performed in a so-called crib session hosted by former BBC Radio 1 DJ Tim Westwood. However, following his trial, he was jailed for a minimum of 21 years. While incarcerated, O'Neill Critchlow recorded a rap song to voice his frustration and regret. In one lyric, the rapper turned thug described the day of Gabidon Link's murder saying, I just thought it was a day out. He went on to say that he saw music as a way out before adding, I want to change my life. This life I'm getting sick of. The young man's co-defendants were named as Terrell Graham, Shireen Cookhorn, Shane Lyons and OJ Hamilton, all of whom were below the age of 21 at the time of their arrest and imprisonment. Number 7. Alfie Hammett and Joshua Howell Shortly after 3.30 p.m. on January the 17th of 2023, English teen Raymond James Quigley was walking with two friends along Westgate Street in Ipswich, Suffolk. Suddenly, the trio were ambushed by a pair of masked thugs who were carrying machetes. One of the assailants stabbed Quigley multiple times in the chest and abdomen. The victim stumbled into an auto shop where he collapsed to the ground and eventually succumbed to his wounds, despite the best efforts of witnesses. Meanwhile, Quigley's friends managed to escape the incident unscathed. After running into another nearby business, the attackers fled before law enforcement arrived at the scene. The following day, however, a local man named Sean Hammett confronted his 18-year-old son Alfie whom he suspected of being involved in the broad daylight stabbing. According to court records, Alfie and the victim were members of rival gangs. Quigley's killing had reportedly been the product of an ongoing feud between the two groups. Sean Hammett informed his son that he'd placed a tracking device on his moped, which confirmed that the teen had been near Westgate Street at the time of Quigley's murder. Police managed 
to use the tracker along with CCTV footage to conclusively place Alfie at the scene of the crime. His accomplice was identified as Joshua Howell, aged 17. The latter denied involvement in the planning or execution of the murder, claiming to have only met Alfie earlier that day when he sold him some cannabis. Howell reiterated his innocence during his trial in early 2024. Alfie likewise denied murder, but both of them were unanimously found guilty by a jury following court proceedings that lasted more than five weeks. In March, the two teens were given life sentences with minimum terms of 24 years for Hammett and 20 years for Howell. Number 6. Matthew Godwin At about 5 p.m. on May the 16th, of 2022, gunfire broke out in the area of West Chester Avenue and Fox Street in the Bronx borough of New York City. As captured by surveillance cameras, an armed teenager opened fire while riding on the back of a moped. The shooter, 15-year-old Matthew Godwin, was allegedly chasing after another teen who managed to avoid injury by fleeing into a nearby apartment building and assisted living center. However, an uninvolved 11-year-old girl who was waiting outside of a Foxhurst nail salon was struck by a stray bullet. The victim, identified as Kaihara Tay, unfortunately lost her life in the shooting. The NYPD offered a $10,000 reward for information leading to Godwin's arrest. Law enforcement also launched a search effort for 18-year-old Omar Bojang, who was accused of driving the moped during the incident. In the early hours of May the 20th, police tracked Godwin to Hotel 95 near Harding Park, where the suspect was hiding out with his mother. He was taken into custody on charges of second-degree murder, first-degree manslaughter, and criminal possession of a weapon. Though the young man had no documented criminal record up to that point, he was known to law enforcement and allegedly had ties to local gangs. In June of 2022, it was reported that both Godwin and Bojang had been indicted on murder and attempted murder charges. As of the latest updates, the case was still ongoing. Number 5. Birmingham Shooting In November of 2021, a 13-year-old boy was gunned down by a group of thugs near the Hockley Circus underpass in Birmingham, England. On the 18th of the month, the unidentified victim and his friends were on their way to pick up some food when they suddenly heard the sound of screeching tires. A Nissan that had been traveling along the A41 abruptly came to a stop on a nearby service road. Four armed assailants hopped out of the car and chased after the group of teens who fled into the underpass. One of the attackers, who was armed with a homemade slam-fire shotgun fired at the group, striking the victim in the back. As shown in CCTV footage, the gang subsequently fled back to the Nissan, which would later turn out to be stolen. In spite of the fact that one of the shotgun pellets traveled through the victim's spinal cord, he managed to survive his injuries, though he was left paralyzed. According to West Midlands Police, the attack was largely unprovoked, but the suspects had targeted the teen because he allegedly entered territory belonging to an infamous gang known as Armed Response. The four attackers were identified as Zidane Edwards, Diago Anderson, Tafik Thomas, and Lewis Clark. It was the latter, at the time only 17 years old, who allegedly fired the weapon that permanently injured the victim. Each of the suspects were charged with attempted murder, of which they were found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. Clark would be eligible for parole after serving 15 years and four months behind bars. Number 4. Dylan Callender O'Brien An 18-year-old gangster from North London became the subject of multiple severe gang injunctions in 2020, which were aimed at controlling his behavior and deterring any further criminal activity. The delinquent in question was identified by the press as Dylan Callender O'Brien from Enfield. By early 2020, O'Brien had committed enough crimes to be given an interim gang injunction. However, 
he quickly violated the court order by using an unregistered cell phone and on multiple occasions traveling to Islington where he'd been banned for past offenses. He was sentenced to eight weeks at an institution for young offenders, but his custodial term was suspended. In the months that followed, O'Brien continued to breach court orders, leading to an even more stringent gang injunction in December. As part of the order, the young man was banned from contacting 59 individuals in connection with his criminal past and was barred from the borough of Islington, as well as areas of Camden and Hackney. O'Brien was also prohibited from riding a bike in public places and possessing a balaclava mask. Per subsequent reports, it was the first time that an injunction included the latter specification. Number 3. Young Thug Prominent hip-hop artist Jeffrey Lamar Williams, better known as Young Thug, became embroiled in complicated legal troubles in 2022. By that time, the Atlanta native had already faced drug and weapons charges in connection with past offenses. However, in May of 2022, Thug was taken into police custody in Atlanta as part of a 56-count RICO Act indictment filed by officials in Fulton County. As a result, he was hit with additional drug and weapons charges relating to the sweeping indictment, which targeted 28 individuals associated with his record label, YSL. Among those arrested alongside with Thug was fellow rap star Gunna. The grand jury indictment labeled YSL as a criminal street gang, allegedly responsible for over 180 crimes. Prosecutors cited rap lyrics from songs released under the YSL umbrella to bolster their case against the label. In the months following the RICO case's emergence, Young Thug was held at the Cobb County Jail and denied bond on several occasions. The trial commenced in November of 2023, though it was then postponed until January of the following year. An article published in early April indicated that the rapper's legal team had filed a motion to have one of the lead prosecutors removed from the case, though the request was denied. Court proceedings were scheduled to resume on April the 8th. Today's topic was requested by Jamie Baxter1579, Ms1171, and Coldfire1111. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Noah Ney In April of 2022, Oklahoma team Noah Ney was responsible for a drive-by shooting in Tulsa that left a five-year-old girl in critical condition. On the day in question, the victim had reportedly been playing outside of her house when the 16-year-old opened fire, striking her in the neck. At the time, Ney, who weighed only 90 pounds and stood just 4 feet 9 inches tall, already had a bevy of criminal charges on his record. He'd been busted for robbery, as well as numerous weapons and drug offenses. The lawless teenager was arrested four days after the shooting, which was later described as a gang initiation. Fortunately, the victim survived the ordeal, but Prosecutors emphasized in court that she very easily could have been killed by Ney. Following his arrest, the latter briefly escaped from custody by hopping a fence near the Juvenile Justice Center's rec yard. In October of 2023, it was reported that Ney had been found guilty of all 10 charges levied against him. He was sentenced to 50 years in prison, though there will reportedly be a judicial review of his punishment in 2028. If you were as shocked as we were about these young thugs, wait till you get a load of what happened to their older counterparts in When Thugs Go Wrong, coming up next. Number 1. Samantha Joseph and Danny McLean A 16-year-old from South London was lured into a deadly honey trap by his girlfriend, Samantha Joseph, in 2008. The latter, who was 15 at the time, asked the victim, identified as Shaquillas Townsend, to meet her near a quiet cul-de-sac in Thornton Heath. Unbeknownst to Townsend, Joseph had another boyfriend at the time, 18-year-old Danny McLean, who ambushed his love rival along with five other boys. 
Townsend was viciously beaten with a baseball bat and stabbed six times. CCTV footage captured Joseph and McLean calmly walking away from the scene of the crime. Townsend was found crying out for his mother as he bled out. He eventually succumbed to his injuries. During criminal proceedings at the Old Bailey, the court heard that McLean had orchestrated the attack because he didn't want Joseph to date Townsend anymore. The young woman claimed to have been blinded by her feelings for McLean, who was ultimately convicted of murder. Both he and Joseph were given life sentences. After serving her minimum term of 10 years, Joseph was deported back to her home country of Trinidad. McLean, meanwhile, was granted early release in 2022 at the age of 32. Number 8. Santo Lozoya and Jose Martinez Two men were arrested in March of 2017 for a fatal drive-by shooting that had occurred a year prior in a Chicago neighborhood. On December the 16th of 2016, after attending a Chicago Bulls game, Crispin Collis went to a Dunning convenience store with a few friends. The 28-year-old exchanged words with Santo Lozoya and Jose Martinez, members of the Milwaukee Kings street gang. Both men had matching face tattoos marking their affiliations and reportedly asked Collis about his gang connections. A mandate of the Kings, as reported by the authorities, was to kill their rivals or perceived rivals on sight. Collies and his companions ignored the thugs who briefly left the scene. Lazoya and Martinez retrieved firearms from a nearby stash house and then returned in a white jeep. They pulled up to Collies' car and fired at least four shots into it. Collies was hit in the temple and later pronounced dead at Lutheran General Hospital the day before his 29th birthday as reported by prosecutors in the case that followed. Lazoya and Martinez later got the logo from the Douce liquor bottle they'd purchased that night tattooed below their eyes to commemorate the murder. The car they'd used in the drive-by was traced back to them, and both men pleaded guilty to the killing. Lazoya was sentenced to nearly 33 years in federal prison, while Martinez, who also pleaded guilty to racketeering charges, was given a 29-year term. Number 7. Noel Reed By October of 2020, teenager Noel Reed from Winsford, England, had begun to act upon his ambition of setting up a drug operation in the area, nicknamed The Devil. He and his crew had become connected with criminal elements, looking to become Winsford's main suppliers. Then, on October the 11th, Reed and several accomplices started looking for two men whom they'd suspected of trying to take over their racket. They spotted their targets in the town's premier store. The victims desperately clung to the front door as Reed brandished a Rambo 3 hunting knife and one of his accomplices started smashing through the glass with a hammer. The two men fled through the stockroom door, but after Reed and the others regrouped, they confronted several of their rival's friends, including 27-year-old former army cadet Keegan Crimes. Even though the latter wasn't known to be involved in criminal activity, Reed attacked him inflicting devastating knife wounds. Crimes died after losing roughly 33 pints of blood. Two other men were non-fatally stabbed as they tried to intervene and swipe at the teenage crime boss with a branch. One eyewitness reported of Reed that he was trying to stab everyone in his sight, like a man possessed trying to kill anyone. After fleeing the scene, Reed later sarcastically posted on Facebook, R.I.P. Keegan, Within weeks of the murder, as the police still searched for the perpetrator, Reed and his crew carried out a violent house burglary. During it, he'd held a mother and son at knife point, threatening to cut them up. DNA evidence eventually tied him to Crimes' killing, while the teen's Google searches revealed phrases such as, Does blood wash off shoes? Rambo three knives and guns. By the time he was discovered, Reed had buried the murder weapon and it wasn't retrieved. He was ordered to serve a minimum of 19 years for the killing and showed little emotion as the sentence was read out. Reed did, however, make gang signs and blow kisses to his friends in the public gallery. Two other teenagers connected to the incident had been given 12-month youth referral orders at an earlier hearing after they'd admitted a fray. Number 6. Jamie Davison 
In July of 2020, British teenager Carl Edgar invited Lee McKnight, with whom she'd once been involved, to her home in Carlisle, Cumbria, with the promise of intimate relations. Unbeknownst to 26-year-old McKnight, Edgar had been doing the bidding of dealer Jamie Davison. McKnight owed him several thousand pounds and had gone into hiding, but Davison used Edgar to lure him out. He recruited Aaron Graham and teenager Jamie Lee Roberts to help him and ambushed McKnight when he arrived at the address. The man was tied to a chair and beaten to the brink of death for roughly two hours. He was punched, kicked, stomped, and struck repeatedly with a diamante-headed riding crop. Davison and his accomplices then dumped his body into River Caldu using a car provided by Edgar's mother. It was also determined that Roberts' father had taken fresh clothing to the blood-splattered house and torched evidence associated with the incident. All six people involved in the killing of McKnight were convicted of murder in 2021. Davis, whom one of his fellow accused characterized as a psychopath, was sentenced to at least 30 years behind bars. Number 5. Young Thug Grammy Award-winning rapper Jeffrey Lamar Williams, professionally known as Young Thug, was denied bail for a third time in August of 2022 in a case relating to his alleged gang activity as well as several other charges. On May the 9th, Williams was arrested in Atlanta, Georgia as one of 28 people charged in a 56-count Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. All the defendants were associated with the Young Stoner Life Records, founded by Williams in 2016. Aside from the RICO charge, a raid of Williams's Buckhead home resulted in six further felony charges for the possession of several firearms, including a machine gun and the violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act. Arguing against Williams's bail release, the prosecution described him and his associates as the real deal, as well as violent, dangerous people who'd been connected to numerous murders. They also pointed to Williams's rap lyrics in which he'd identified himself as the gang's general. Number 4. Daniel Masayolik and Camille Lesayak On November the 28th of 2015, Daniel Masayolik and Camille Lesayak attacked a 27-year-old man with an aluminium baseball bat and then forced him into a taxi into the former's home in Netherton, Merseyside, England. Over the course of nine hours, the man was subjected to degrading torture by Lesayak and Masayolik, whose numerous face tattoos included the words thug life below his mouth. It involved forcing the victim to perform intimate acts on them, urinating on him, inserting objects into his body, repeated beatings, and locking him in a small storage cupboard. Masayalek's 27-year-old fiance, Orna Basak, filmed roughly 90 minutes of the man's ordeal on her cell phone. They made him confess he'd had inappropriate relations with minors, which, albeit untrue, the victim did, hoping it would end his torment. He then heard the others leave while he was locked in the cupboard. The victim kicked the doors open, got dressed, and made his escape by jumping from a window. Masayalek, Lesayek, and Bazak were arrested in the aftermath and sentenced at Liverpool Crown Court in 2016. Masayalek was jailed for life with a minimum of nine years served, his fiancée for 12 years, and Lesayek for 18 years. Number 3. Michael Lynn Rogers in 2016, Michael Lynn Rogers was the second in command for the North Texas branch of the notorious Aryan Brotherhood gang. In July of that year, the man known as Texas Mike gruesomely murdered 34-year-old Alberto Gonzalez at his Dallas home. The latter wasn't affiliated with the white supremacist gang and had reportedly gone to Rogers' address to buy illicit substances. AB affiliates Gregory Collier and John Paul Street were also present in the home. At one point, Rogers accused Gonzalez of stealing a wallet containing $600 from him. It marked the beginning of a ruthless and horrific assault on the man. He was struck with a hammer, slashed with a machete, burned with a hot spoon, and had a broom handle inserted in his body. Rogers then used a power tool to drill four holes into the man's skull and two more into his chest and abdomen. Gonzalez's body was dumped at a remote pond near Irvine, Texas, and set on fire. 
The three men were arrested and Rogers initially tried to pin the murder on the other two, but Collier and his girlfriend testified against him for his cooperation. Collier received a 10-year sentence for a reduced kidnapping charge, while Rogers was sentenced to life without parole. Details of Gonzalez's killing troubled the jurors, who asked whether their name would be made public prior to delivering a verdict. As reported by Dallas Morning News, over 15 officers were dispatched to the courtroom to ensure the jurors would leave safely. Number 2. Mirella Ponce Following her arrest in October of 2017, Mirella Ponce earned considerable attention on social media with many users referring to her as a hot felon. 20-year-old Ponce, who was affiliated with the Tiny Rascal Gang, had been arrested by law enforcement in Fresno, California. Following a traffic stop, the young mother was in the car with her baby, two fellow gang members, and two firearms which had been reported stolen. She was charged with carrying a concealed firearm and carrying a stolen firearm, both of which were felonies. Fresno police shared Ponce's mugshot online as well as a photo of the lilac handgun found in her possession. Visible from the processing photo were Ponce's multiple neck and chest tattoos, one of which read, love is pain, while another, pain is pleasure. The mother of two's bail was set at $50,000 for each count, and many within her newfound following offered to pay her bail or advocated for her release. Much like with Jeremy Meeks, a felon who'd become a social media sensation a few years prior, the arrest provided an opportunity for Ponce to turn her mugshot into a successful modeling career. Number 1. Bryce Rhodes On May the 22nd of 2016, Kentucky brothers Maurice Gordon and Larry Ordway were stabbed to death by a gang leader who'd initially tried to recruit them. Local rapper Bryce Rambo Rose was among the four people charged with the double homicide. Rose was also charged with the shooting death of 40-year-old Christopher Jones on May the 4th. Teenagers Gordon and Ordway reportedly looked up to Rhodes, who'd sold them on the idea of fame and the street gangster lifestyle. He took them shopping for designer clothes and featured them holding guns in his rap videos. On May the 4th, Rhodes spotted Jones while driving through Louisville with the brothers and two other teenagers. He mistook Jones for a local gangster who had a price on his head. Thinking he'd collect on the hit, 25-year-old Rhodes jumped out of the car and gunned down the innocent man. Gordon and Ordway witnessed the killing and were left terrified of Rhodes, who later began fearing that they'd go to the police. A few weeks later, he invited them to his home under the guise of partying. He eventually accused the brothers of stealing from him, which was believed to have been a pretext to kill them. After a brief scuffle, he bound and separated them, as reported by another teenager present at the scene, who'd later become Rose's co-defendant, he made Gordon get on his knees and beg for forgiveness. Once he'd done so, Rose put a stocking over his head, gagged him, and stabbed him multiple times in the chest. He then knifed Ordway to death as well. The bodies were found, burned and dumped behind an abandoned house. The murder was traced back to Rose who subsequently pleaded not guilty. His three co-defendants all took plea deals that, in at least one case, involved giving evidence against him. The trial was repeatedly delayed, but the hearings were marked by several instances of troubling behavior on Rhodes' part. One in 2016 involved him threatening the presiding judge and her family, while in 2018, he laughed at the murdered teen's mother, prompting her to lunge at him and be escorted out of the courtroom. His constant disruptive attitude towards the authorities caused him at one point to be brought into court wearing a spit mask. He made my reach on his knees and like beg for forgiveness. And like he put a put the bargain over his head and he put a stuff, he put his he put a rag in his mouth. And then he stabbed him. We moved Maurice to the side, and we broke his brother, and we put the tobacco in his head. He put the bag in his head and put the sock in his mouth. And like, sorry, stay good too. Thanks for watching. If you found out that your favorite musician was being accused of horrific crimes, would you still listen to their music? Let us know in the comments section below.